could the ongoing war between Hamas and Israel scuttle one of the most hard-won geopolitical developments, the Abraham Accords? As Israel continues its retaliatory attacks in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, that's the question that's the foremost in the minds of geopolitical observers. Let's understand what is the Abraham Accords and what does the ongoing war mean for the future of Israel-Arab ties? Brokered by the Trump administration, the Abraham Accords is a series of agreements signed by Israel with four Arab nations, the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, Bahrain, and Sudan, between September 2020 and January 2021. The treaties were a significant development, especially in the light of the past wars fought between the two sides over the Palestine question. Although the Palestinian conflict has been simmering since after the First World War, it was the United Nations proposal to split Palestine in 1947 into separate Jewish and Arab states that first sparked a direct confrontation between Jews and the Arab world. In 1948, after Britain withdrew its mandate and left Palestine, the state of Israel was created, causing four Arab states, Egypt, Iraq, Transjordan, and Syria, to invade it. Over the years, Arab states and Israel have faced off several times, most notably during the Suez Crisis in 1956, the Six-Day War in 1967, the Yom Kippur War in 1973, and the 1982 Lebanon War when Israel invaded the country. The wars were primarily fought over the two-state solution, that is the establishment of a Jewish and an Arab state in the areas of the former British Mandate of Palestine. As a result of these conflicts, a large majority of Arab nations refused to recognize Israel as a state. In 1967, just after the Six-Day War fought between Israel and a coalition of Arab states, the Arab League passed a resolution against Israel at a summit held at Khartoum in Sudan. In the resolution, which eventually came to be known as the Three No's, the League resolved to have no peace with Israel, no recognition of Israel, and no negotiations with Israel. As a result of this, ties between Israel and the Arab world were simply non-existent for decades. This first changed in 1978 with the Camp David Accords, a treaty between Egypt and Israel to normalize ties. In 1994, Jordan signed a peace agreement with Israel. Despite this, it wasn't until 2020 and the Abraham Accords that more Arab countries began to publicly resume diplomatic ties with Tel Aviv. The name Abraham Accords is rooted in the common belief in Abraham as the patriarch of all Abrahamic religions, particularly Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Accords have two parts to it, a declaration that calls for peace and coexistence in the Middle East, and the bilateral agreements built upon the declaration. An expert speaking to the print highlighted that the Abraham Accords is a platform built upon two pillars the acceptance of Israel as a legitimate state and the eventual resolution of the Israel-Palestine conflict. Morocco, Bahrain, and the UAE have all signed normalization agreements with Israel as a part of the Abraham Accords, thereby allowing countries to exchange ambassadors with one another and the establishment of embassies in either country. Sudan, however, has only signed the Abraham Accords declaration calling for peace in the Middle East and coexistence between nations, while it is still currently negotiating a normalization agreement with Israel. Experts posit that Israel's current war with Hamas would be a temporary setback, delaying normalization of ties between other Arab states and Israel. But the path towards normalization would continue going forward. This is Keshav Padmanabhan for The Print. Please subscribe to The Print for the latest news and analysis.